Y'all told me that I'm never gonna get to 100% capture with all of the dust collection because some of that is gonna get trapped up in the system, in the ducting and some of those coil hoses uh, all along the path. So my fundamental method of measuring was flawed. Okay, I hear where you're going. So your suggestion was I should only be concerned about weighing the filter to see what has escaped out of the system. I like that. Only problem was, when I went to put that on my scale, it wouldn't take that much weight. So I had to buy a new scale. This is a Waymax scale. It's the finest scale that you can buy for $22 off of Amazon. It is model number W280990BLK if you're interested in picking up one of these fine scales for yourself. One of my primary reasons for buying this scale is that it will take a max weight up to over 40,000 grams. Let's go put it to the test and see what our filter weighs before we put any more dust through the system. Okay, so 8,256 grams. All right, we're gonna get everything reattached here and run another test. I've got another thousand grams of material. Now that may not be enough to be statistically significant, but I'm trying to slow down the feed rate to better emulate the actual production from the tools and not overwhelm the unit with something that isn't a real world practical test. So we're gonna slow this down uh, and see if we get a different result that way with the same amount of material as we did the last test. I'm also gonna go ahead and run this test with four inch line. That's way more airflow than we should be running based on all the stats and numbers, but I wanna simulate some of the worst case scenarios so that we can see what the results are. Trying to feed this way slower than what I have in the past to try to emulate what's coming out of my tools. See if that makes any difference. Thirty-eight minutes of feeding material. Whew. Okay, I'm not going to weigh the what's in the canisters. I'm only going to weigh the filter to see how much made it through the system. Eight thousand two hundred and sixty-eight grams. Okay, eight thousand two hundred sixty-eight grams. That's twelve grams. So, uh, what is that? That's 0.012, so that's 1.2% captured, 98.8% efficient. What? Holy crud. What just happened? I want you all to see the difference between this and the original tests uh, where I showed you the material on the bottom. Here, here's what we're seeing. There, there's hardly enough to even push together into a pile on the bottom of this plate uh, where the filter is at. A little bit of fine material there at the bottom. I didn't change anything in the core system, I promise. Everything that you're seeing here is the same as the previous set of tests. In fact, I'm even using the four inch inlet, so it is the max airspeed flowing through the system. The only thing that I did change was I slowed down the feed rate. Uh, and so in this case, I ran a thousand grams of material in over roughly 35 minutes. That works out to about 25 grams a minute or 1500 grams per hour. That's likely as high of a feed rate that I'm gonna see from any of my tools. I've got a belt sander, a drum sander, a CNC machine, and a bandsaw that are producing sawdust. Now let's stop there and talk about the numbers that we just saw and that I reported out. If I run those numbers, I come up with roughly 12 grams of material that I see collected in the filter. From that 1,000 grams of material, that works out to about 1.2% captured or 98.8% efficiency. That is a huge gain over where we were previously, and I'm excited about those numbers. But I lied to you a little. 
The numbers I gave you were actually the result of a second run of another thousand grams of material run at about the same rate. That means that we take all of those numbers and divide them by 2000. That gets us to 0.6% captured, which means that we are getting a 99.4% efficiency rate out of the system. That's it, I'm out. Nah, there's still more that we can do. Y'all still had some really great ideas that I want to work through. Uh, some of that is involving the static electricity that you're concerned about. We want to go ahead and take care of that. I'll probably run a copper strip on the inside of that tube and then ground that. Then I'm also going to take a look at redesigning that port on the very end where the fines are collected to make the exit tangential to the side so that as it spins around, it'll drop straight down. I think that'll actually help improve that even just a little bit more and save our filter life. But my goodness, I, I don't think I could be more excited about what we ended up with. I mean, who thought we were gonna get this far with this level of efficiency out of a few 3D printed parts? Like I said before, whether you build one of these for your shop is completely up to you. You may just pick up one of those Cyclones. Those are absolutely fantastic and do a great job doing the same thing. This was just a personal challenge for me around a system that I thought was really neat to build and we ended up with something very successful. Thanks for sticking with this series all the way to the end. Thanks for all of your encouragement and ideas. I'll catch you all next time.